All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is, I'm going to say this badly, Andrea Cuccinello. Not bad, cool. From Data Bene, and we're going to be talking about growing the Postgres community. Thank you. So, welcome everyone. As Grant like pronounced it perfectly, I'm Andrea Cuccinello. Uh, and basically, I'm very happy to have the opportunity today to talk about my experience in the PostgreSQL community, uh, which is basically now it's been over 10 years that I'm involved in organizing event. And basically, I've experienced uh, since 2013 the incredible growth of uh, PostgreSQL and the success of PostgreSQL. And which I think that part of it, it's, I mean, it's especially like it's community and community event spreading words about PostgreSQL and why we love it so much. Um, so agenda, just I'm going to give like very brief introduction um, about myself, challenges and success in organizing event, why it matters organizing event, and this is like, I'm not a technical people, so when I, uh, I got engaged with PostgreSQL, um, what I perceived was more the economic and strategic advantages of PostgreSQL. And then, um, you know, the growth of PostgreSQL, its community over the years, I, there is a correlation. Uh, the question is, there is causation. I don't know, but certainly there is a correlation. Um, and so, final thought. And this is sort of more like presentation conversation, so feel free to ask questions and even make like a comment, perhaps if you think that I'm missing something important. Um, so, just a little bit about my background, like personal. I think it's important to understand who I am. The fact that I am born in Italy, but then let's say I travel the world. Uh, I lived 10 years in Australia. I've got married. I have two beautiful daughters. And since the end of 2019, I live in Spain, Barcelona. And I actually did like as well six months Erasmus in in Maastricht, Holland, and it's where I realized that, you know, I could, you know, travel, visit, experience new stuff. So that got me, you know, uh, excited about um, traveling. And this is more like the professional uh, bio. As I said, I got in touch with PostgreSQL in 2013, and that was, thank you to, I was doing an MBA at Monash University in Melbourne. And I collaborated to a corporate project in which, basically, I was introduced to Second Quadrant, Second Quadrant Italy. And I met Gabriele Bartolini, which is actually you know, standing there, which was the managing director of Second Quadrant Italy. And as part of my corporate project, I think I've interviewed about 200 people, asking them why they were using PostgreSQL what they're thinking about, open source. And so it was clear then the pattern was like, everybody was really excited about open source, uh, getting away from proprietary software. But it was also like one important question is like, okay, but if I'm moving, who is gonna give me support? What I'm gonna do, like what's the community? Uh, is PostgreSQL gonna stay open source, or you know, you, you know, the the, the project eventually uh, is gonna stop? So there was clear that the fact that we need to have events, talk to people that were you know potentially interested, and and basically making you know reassuring them that yeah, there's a big community. <laughs> uh, the, the, the project is backed up by thousands of people uh, worldwide. Uh, it's not going to end, and especially there are a lot of companies that are providing support, so you can safely think about you know, embracing open source and PostgreSQL. 
And then I started as well organizing event in Melbourne, um, meetup initially, and then we got this crazy idea of organizing uh, PG Day as well. I say crazy idea because there was, in 2013, there was like the first attempt to do like a PG day in Australia and then for basically four years there was no events and then 2017 we started uh, organizing and I mean we can say it was a success because already the first event we had over you know 100 people attending and so we replicated in 2017, 2018, and then 2019. And then I relocated to Barcelona, as I mentioned, the end of 2019, COVID. Uh, and basically also my, let's say, community engagement activity stopped there for a while. And then I restarted recently this year in 2024. Uh, organizing uh, the Barcelona and Madrid uh, meetups, actually with the help. So these are like a few pictures from the experience in, in Australia. So as you can see, 2017, then 2019 actually uh, in Sydney. We moved first two years, they were in Melbourne, and then the idea was to basically have uh, the event every second year in a different city. So in 2019, which was actually the, the third you know, year in a row, we moved it to Sydney. And then this was also sadly the, the last event in, in, in Australia. So since 2019, uh, there hasn't been any PG day. I think again, COVID, um, some maybe other things, factors like um, me not being there as well, helping out some other people moved and changed position and moved to some other country. So as well, we, I'm gonna mention that, but it's one of the challenge as well in when you're organizing an event in the community. I think you need to try to get, you know, the more people they get involved into organizing a local meetup and then can support a PG day, the better, because, because we all move around and change jobs and change country. And so if there are like only two or three people maybe involved in a particular meetup, that eventually could be, could be an issue in, in the long term. Uh, so it's actually, this is the first time that I'm talking to, uh, you know, PG Conf, but um, I had my, 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 my first experience delivering a presentation um, at, um, you know, a PostgreSQL International um, conference. It was not a very good experience as a presenter point of view, because I had to present, uh, you know, about the, the, a presentation that wasn't mine, okay? And it was given to me like sort of last minute, so I had to to, to basically arrange and try to uh, this thing. Sorry, keep uh, changing. Um, anyhow, so long story short, basically I delivered the talk. It wasn't the like a good delivery the way I did it, but again, there was a lot of uh, a lot of support from the people from the organizer from the conference, and actually people helping me out during the Q&A session to answer questions about the security of PostgreSQL. Luckily that there was Stephen Frost uh, there in the audience that he could take uh, care of all security questions for me. And so again, that was like, uh, for me, like the, the, the proof that we are all like, after all, a, big community like a family. So it was a bad experience as a presenter point of view, a great experience again as a community member. Um, and so again, as I mentioned, Barcelona and Madrid uh, meetups, I'm not alone. Uh, there is uh, Dave, which is just uh, sitting in the second row there, which actually is, he had the, um, Dave Pitts had the idea of starting up the meetups in Madrid, 
And then basically when I said, I offer my help to also have it, um, Barcelona and to sort of running together with, um, um, you know, sort of co-organization in which we can have, the aim is to have uh, basically two events per quarter, one in each city. So Madrid and Barcelona. First event was May 30 in Madrid, and then the inaugural one in Barcelona we did in September 19th. And then we actually have already two events scheduled, the second meetup in Madrid, October 30, and Barcelona, November 20. So we're getting in a good cadence as well because we have a lot of support from the, the companies. There's a lot of interest in supporting the local community in, in Spain, in Barcelona and Madrid, which is great. Uh, so there are like already a lot of companies that are uh, backing us up and providing venue, uh, you know, catering, sponsorship. So it's been, it's been good. And that's very important as well uh, for, you know, again, long term. You obviously, as I mentioned, you need people to be involved, but <laughs> you need as well company to support. So that's been very good. And we also have Nacho Alonso, Portillo from, uh, well, Microsoft. I'm, uh, I'm currently working at Databene. I didn't mention that, which is one of the sponsors as well of this event. And um, Nacho from Microsoft and then David's from Adyen. So like three different companies already there supporting uh, the, the, the local meetups. And, but there are like much more companies that already say, no, don't worry, we're gonna support you, we're gonna you know, give you all the necessary things that you need. So it's been great again. Coming soon, as I mentioned, the two events. And one thing that you can do as well as part of the community to support us is actually to scan <laughs> this code and to follow us on LinkedIn, this is the page that basically try to keep together the two meetups and where we post news about the events. And this is an easy way as well to, to basically support us is just to, to follow our page and to reshare, to repost when we post something. Because even if you're not in Spain, probably there's gonna be someone in your network that maybe is located in Spain or maybe for a coincidence is traveling uh, to Spain when there is an event that is, you know, could be interested in, uh, again, in attending. So that's, that's a great way as well to support. Challenges. Uh, I think I've already, you know, mentioned uh, like a few of them. And well, this is actually, sorry. <laughs> Actually, this was a question, but the animation is not working because I had to download uh, the, the slide, and the animation uh, it's not working anymore. But basically, these are important distinction about uh, a meetup and a PG day. And it's just to make sure that everybody is aligned to the fact that you know local meetup is more like small uh, group for more local but they actually play an important role because they also like a, a way to then uh, create that local community that you then need to have more large and international conference like this one. Uh, so again, the importance of creating a community is also reflects then uh, when we having more international and larger events like PGConf. And Again, challenges. As I mentioned, we all like people with family, uh, family commitments, uh, kids and stuff. So time management, it's probably one of the biggest challenge when you are involved in community. Uh, because you're doing this on top of your uh, job. It's like extra activities. And so, because you're doing that effort, it's very important as well that the company that you're working for as well understand the importance of some, that someone needs to be involved and that the work that you're doing on top of your normal, it's recognized. 
and and so com company support when i talk about company support i'm not talking only about okay give me money because i need to pay for food and drinks for the event it's like also okay if i'm doing the event and I need to run all the activities around events, and especially I'm attending the event and I'm coming late at night. Maybe if I'm not available at 8 a.m. the following day, so you know that it shouldn't be a, 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 an issue. That's, so we also need that type of support. And finding sponsor, I honestly, that's something that. It could be it could be an issue. I my experiences have always been very lucky. Uh, I always I've, when you know talking to different people from different company and explaining you know why we were organizing the the local meetups and we needed support. I never heard like someone basically saying no. So I have to be honest like. For my personal experience always been relatively easy to find sponsorship, but also the honest truth, it's like you have to go and basically talk to as many people as possible as well. Uh, and again, networking is very important because there's gonna be always someone and is gonna tell you, oh yeah, maybe, maybe you know my company could be interested, but let me give you this, talk to this colleague, or perhaps, oh, I'm gonna forward you the right contact to talk to. So again, it's relatively easy, but you, again, if you were in charge of some uh, community events, networking and talking and explaining what you're doing, it's, 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 it's key. And sometimes there's, I mean, as I say, there's some lack of recognition. Uh, so we probably we will need to improve that uh, somehow. Uh, just you know, appreciating all the hard work that it's done when when you organize an event. It's like sometimes it's logistics problem. Uh, you need to talk to speakers. You need to make sure uh, to have an agenda, and then you need to make sure as well that you're providing some collateral things like we said, food, food and drinks, and the catering is like uh, something that someone needs to, to take care of. In How will you go about, so we say you have a checklist of things that you need to do to organize an event. And, you know, there are many resources around, so I'm just gonna show you some of the resources that I found very useful just on the next slide. And this is not really a presentation which I'm gonna tell you, you need to absolutely do this, do that, make sure, because again, like there are already some resources about that, but this is more like, do it if you want to do it if you're interested and you want to help and you want to be you know involved in the community event just do it it's a trial and error the important thing is just to start and the first event probably you're gonna have maybe five or six people sometimes it happens especially for local meetups and it's like okay you're starting somewhere <laughs> again word of mouth people are, are going to start talking about the event but the I think the most, the, the things that you have to do is just keep going. Uh, people, if people know that every three months or every six months is not possible, there's gonna be an event, they're gonna start uh, following you and attending the event. And the numbers are gonna grow. And again, it's networking in fact. It's, you're gonna basically create a virtual cycle in which as well, you know, uh, people want to, to, to come and talk to the event, so finding a speaker won't be a problem. And, 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 and then again, like, as, as I mentioned, uh, more companies are going to be interested in sponsoring the event, and finding sponsor is not going to be a problem. So you're gonna initiate, um, like, uh, 
something good, and my uh, advice is just start. Start somewhere. Don't worry. Don't worry too much about uh, what sort of cadence you have to you have to have, and how many people are going to attend to the first event. So basically, yeah, I was saying there are like already useful resources uh, from explaining what you really need, uh, you know, from a checklist point of view uh, when you want to organize a PG day or as well things that you need to consider um, you know for local meetups and there is also an interesting uh, you know user group operating manual uh, again with some advice one of the things that again I found a little bit from the user group operating manual, like one of the advice is like, oh, you really need to try to organize one event per month, okay? Which is, yeah, it's in the perfect scenario. But again, don't be scared because to organize one event per month, it is really difficult, especially at the beginning. So aiming for, you know, a quarterly, uh, you know, cadence schedule, it's something that is maybe, again, more manageable, and uh, it helps you to create a community around. You don't, of course, then if you can get into the monthly uh, cadence, that's perfect, but don't be scared about some of the advice that you might uh, probably, you know, find on when, you, when you're looking for uh, what sort of things that you will need to take care of. So yeah, basically the virtuous cycle that I already mentioned, uh, and so basically just starting somewhere is going to help, and the momentum will will make your event organization a uh, lot easier. Choosing the right channel for promotion, this is probably something that I'm still trying to figure it out. At the moment, we're using uh, LinkedIn and we're using the Meetups channel to send um, messages to the basically already the, the 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 members of the Meetups. But there are like so many channels. Like now, there's Mastodon, there's uh, X, uh, Slack, Discord. So again, probably if someone has the time to have a proper marketing approach and coordinating, you know, having multiple announcements through different channel. Um, I mean, that would be that would be passed. But at the moment, we again trying to manage it. We decided to go with 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 LinkedIn more. But again, this is probably a question for all of you. What what's the type of you know channel that then you use when you looking for, you know, events, updates. Uh, so that would be, that would be interesting. Oh, who's using uh, LinkedIn? Mastodon? Okay. X? And Slack? But we will use more Slack maybe to then engage into conversation once you're already part of, correct? And Discord maybe? Yeah, okay. So, seems like LinkedIn it's okay and Mastodon too. And X, not as much popular. Challenges from a community point of view. Uh, there's been a very uh, interesting session uh, delivered at PG Conf Dev uh, just this year uh, by Joe Conway and Stacy Eisler. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the names correctly, where we were basically pointing out that the fact that, again, we need more people. We always need more people, OK? And also they were, they discussed about, okay, how can we involve more people and how we can retain more people? I think the retention things, it's 
as much as important as the fact that we need more people. We also need to make sure that people, once they uh, engage in the community, they stay in the community. And then again, like what I was mentioning at the beginning, you know, people might change jobs, uh, people might move and into more companies that maybe they are not that supportive uh, with PostgreSQL. And so it all becomes all of a sudden more complicated for you to be, to be involved. And, and so that's, that's, that's an important uh, point. There's been like, now there is like um, a website, the PostgreSQL contribution, uh, which are basically, uh, you know, trying to sh shine to, to shred a light, I would say, to projects and to people that are contributed to the community of PostgreSQL, uh, which has been, I think, a very interesting initiative and can obviously contribute to the fact that uh, people that are involved can be recognized. Um, and I was actually doing, okay, what can we do something else? And this is like, I was thinking why we don't have like a PG community awards then maybe. We can have some sort of awards to also uh, for categories like the best PG day organization, the best meetup organization, the best code contributor, whatever. So having something that perhaps, it, you know, a, it could be, it goes into a direction in which, again, we're trying to reward people that are uh, involved and contribute, and not only with code, but with different uh, activities. And then this is an aspect that, of course, has an impact on me. As I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm not a, uh, I'm non, non tech. I came from marketing and operations. And I think for people that are coming from a tech profile, it somehow it is easier to stay and contribute to the community, even in case they change jobs. For us non-tech, we really need to make sure that w if we do and when we do change job, we are going to another organization in which, again, is going to recognize the fact that we're using some of our time to do these activities. And so it could be, uh, let's say, an extra challenge and one of the other key parameters that I personally started to look at uh, because since, again, the change in, when I'm basically the change in location that I mentioned in 2019, then after, you know, 2021, I changed job and I end up basically collaborating with companies that were like, we don't care. <laughs> and so now I'm happy that since last year I joined DataBene, which is, a, again, it's one of the company in which the they're happy when they see someone from within that they help with community events. And why it matters. So all these, you know, talk about why, you know, it's good to contribute, why we should contribute, what, what's from, uh, why it matters really. So it matters because as mentioned uh, at the beginning, again, I'm repeating myself, but I think it's an important concept uh, from local, from organizing meetups. Again, we can create local apps, then basically, you know, they come together when we have international event like this one. Uh, and so people from Spain can be here, people from Germany, people from France, they all have different experiences in or organizing local events. And again, you know, we come here together and we can share ideas and we can share our own experiences and we can think about, okay, what we did then, we worked, they can be replicated somewhere else. 
and perhaps some thing that we tried that it didn't actually work out quite well. And again, we can, you know, we can share bad experiences as well. And, but the most important thing is like through this local network of events, then we leverage it. Uh, we can have this bigger international conference, which are growing and growing. I remember last year for PG Conf in Prague, I think we were 720, and this year we hit like the 800 mark, if I'm not wrong. I don't have the exact number, but again, it grew, and probably next year, uh, you know, the organizer will need to look for, you know, a bigger place than it can host uh, 1,000 people. And it's like, we're growing, it's good, it poses more challenges. Uh, we need more people to help, uh, you know, uh, with a solution for those challenges. And so, uh, we need, again, uh, support from company. Then they will sponsor, will continue to sponsor event. We, they will encourage participation from within. So promoting PostgreSQL internally, of course, and keep contributing to, to, to open source, okay? And again, contribution can be in, in, many, in, in many ways. Um, If you support, if you're a company, why I should be bothered, you know, to support, okay? It is only, you know, providing resources. There are maybe, you know, again, taking uh, some time to do this extra effort. Uh, and maybe I'm also sponsoring. That means that, you know, I'm paying money. Uh, but there is ov obviously, for a company point of view, there is also uh, like benefits. Uh, brand recognition, if you can attach your name supporting a local event, but international event, brand recognition. This is the fact that a lot of people that are interested in contributing to the community, they want to work with you. So talent acquisition. And you can, uh, as, uh, as well, you can uh, have, I call it access of information. Uh, if you're attending local event, especially, and you know what people are interested about, so especially, you know, when you talk to people and you have to have an agenda, that they're gonna tell you what sort of topics, and so it's a, it's a mechanism as well for companies to maybe detect, you know, early trend, and and, and, and as well, you know, trying to 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 not to be a follower, but someone that is going to anticipate what people want and they are looking for. How many of you are actually involved in community? Okay, so basically most, most of us. Good. Uh, and what I'm saying, does it make sense? Or you say this is just a, you know, a bunch of, I don't wanna say crap because it's recorded, but yeah. Uh, another thing that we can all do, if you haven't done yet, again, this goes into contributing to the community. You can reply to the uh, state of PostgreSQL survey uh, whether you knew or been using Postgres for years, uh, your feedback, it's good because again, through this survey, uh, we can get some information about location of PostgreSQL user, uh, how you first heard about PostgreSQL, main reason for choosing PostgreSQL, and then the report will be published uh, and will be freely available. So again, this is like something easy to do and can contribute to the community. And this is like, again, I was, uh, as I was saying at the beginning, uh, from a non-tech point of view, when I basically started to be involved with uh, PostgreSQL, 
it for me was like, okay, it's 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 a no brain from an operational uh, point of view, from a commercial point of view. Why I mean, why I should keep basically buying uh, proprietary software when I can use something that it's freely available. Everybody, uh, I mean, everybody. It's, it's it's well known for being like a robust robust database, very stable, and and then as it's backed up by you know community driven development by thousand people all over the world that are actively contributing to 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 this project, and so for me it's like I. I felt that you know it's something that it's correct, it's right. That and I wanted to again be able to basically organize this community event and spreading. Uh, sorry, I don't know why it keeps. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, but anyway, so the the main point again, uh, the community development uh, model of uh, strategic advantages, and so talking about these uh, benefits and talking about PostgreSQL, trying to be involved in organizing event, to me made a lot of sense. And and basically, yeah, that's that's why uh, I still keep doing this. Uh, if we look at the growth of open source, uh, this is based on the World of Open Source report uh, in 2013 when I was first involved. You know, 78% of the company were using open source software. This went up last year to 95%, okay? And the primary reason, it's cost reduction and redu reducing vendor lock-in, okay? And if you basically combine those two aspects, they're like 66% of the organization that considering basically the, the cost reduction as a key factor and avoiding vendor lock-in. So, the open source uh, world, the open source movement grew a lot in the last 10 years, and PostgreSQL uh, basically played a key role in this, in, this, in this growth, and has been adopted all over the years by the major uh, companies. So if in 2013 I was hearing people telling me that they were interested in open source, but they didn't know, they, they were interested in PostgreSQL, but they didn't know about, you know, they, they were afraid of some risks, like having support, uh, what, you know, com community support from professional companies, but as well support by the community. I think all, no one, I think now, has, you know, any doubt about the fact that if you move and you adopt PostgreSQL, you know, you're gonna get in trouble. That if you don't know to do stuff, you will be left alone. So we came from, I think, a long way from 2013 now to 2024, where, uh, you know, big company, corporation have embraced open source and have embraced uh, PostgreSQL. This is, again, just to show uh, from DB Engines, uh, you know, the, 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 the popularity of, of PostgreSQL uh, I'm not sure if you are all familiar, but basically what it does, DB Engine, they track uh, the number of time, you know, PostgreSQL is mentioned in different channels like Google Trends, if you're using Alaska social media, so they all collect this data, and they put it together, 
and and then they track basically the popularity and this 2023 was like again postgresql has been nominated as the most popular database um, this is again stark overflow developers uh, survey which basically ranks the database based on developer preferences again uh, Postgres, uh, it's basically, it's coming on top. And this is like achieved, this has been achieved relatively in a very short amount of time because before 2018, they weren't even tracking PostgreSQL through the survey. So it's like in six years, you know, when I had of competitor like MySQL, uh, MongoDB and etc. So that again impressive and again this is just to show like over the last years, 10 years but if we get uh, even like the last five years the popularity of, of, of the tool. PostgreSQL event. So I was saying this is just an attempt uh, to correlate the grow in PostgreSQL popularity, which is has been tracked, you know, by a different type of survey, with the fact that the number of events as well, uh, you know, the huge increase in number of events, and then again the fact that these people behind and arrange those events in which people come together and we all can talk about the benefits of adopting PostgreSQL and open source in general. Uh, there's a caveat. So to count the number of events, I basically use the PostgreSQL.org archives and the meetups then actually add, uh, you know, recorded events. And I ask, because there were a lot of them, basically asked ChatGPT, please, can you count the number of event track in the archives and in the meetup? So it's limited to those sources and the help of artificial intelligence. So there might be some, if someone would ever maybe double check the number, maybe there will be actually more events than these ones. But this gives, you know, any, any, I think a good estimate, especially of the, the trend. Obviously, like it went down between 2020 and 2021 because of COVID. Uh, and event types, meetups. Uh, of course, I mean, there are more meetups that uh, PG days, that international conference. And so they, again, play a key role. The local, regional meetups, they, uh, to me, they play a key roles. And so we, we, need, to, we need to support um, the, the, the meetups. And then again, follow us, Barcelona and Madrid. Uh, meetups, LinkedIn page, please. And this is the, just a quick snapshot of the distribution of those events. Europe, it's leading. Uh, then there's North America, of course, Asia and Australia. I was mentioning like this is something that the, 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 there's been like few few events, and and we need to again encourage. encourage. I know that there's been uh, now uh, there's going to be in March uh, as well an India. PG, uh, not sure about the name, but anyway, a PG day uh, as well. Uh, so this is just to end because I think I'm right on time. Five minutes, perfect. Uh, again, I uh, want to emphasize the importance of to keep the PostgreSQL community uh, growing. Uh, we will need to engage with more people, we will need actually probably younger people uh, full of energy to help us uh, because I can see Grant <laughs> starting to be pretty tired after a few hours of volunteering. So we need, yeah, uh, 
people, younger people. And yeah, the, co the, the positive community uh, has played a, a pivotal role in shaping the, dev the development, the success of, of these amazing tools. So uh, again, just a, a final remark. It's like, let's spread the word. Let's try to get pe more people involved. And again, what we can do, uh, I think we all really need to think about it, what we can do to retain people, to make sure that people that are uh, engaged in community uh, event, they don't disengage by one reason uh, of, of the other. So that's basically uh, it for me. Thank you so much. Uh, you, can, you can also leave a feedback about this uh, presentation. Uh, so thank you again. If there are like, any other maybe questions or maybe comments, maybe if you want to share something that happened to you in the organization of event. Okay. Well, uh, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you, Andrea, for, for the presentation. I, I, I want to say two things. Okay. First one, uh, I like the award thing. Yeah. My advice is to. I've, I've been like in the last five years to be mm -hmm. more. I mean, this is my first Postgres conference in five years. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I've been in the Kubernetes community all this time. And I might say, you know, the CNCF has much more money. We don't even have an idea, I think, how much money they have. But I think there are some, I mean, we can learn from their experiences in terms of diversity, inclusivity, also ideas like, you know, the lack of recognition you were, you were saying. I mean, that's, I think, one of the reasons why I stopped you know, uh, doing events in Italy, okay? Um, so I think that that could be an idea we could, to, to, to look at these uh, going outwards, okay, instead of just being focused inwards as a community, okay? Embrace other communities, and I think that's where we, we can actually get more people involved. So this is, I, I'm, I'm having a fascinating experience now in the Kubernetes community because there's, so many young people that don't even know what a database is. And now I see that they're using Postgres as their first database, but they don't know how to use it. Okay, so that, that's why I'm here, you know, to, to try and encourage more people to also be there so that the Postgres community can grow. Yeah, okay. That's, that's That is an important point that I haven't touched, but yeah, as well, I don't know how to call it, but cross-contamination yeah. uh, among, you know, uh, you know, other communities that they use uh, complementary technology, uh, in which we can, again, go and uh, perhaps the, it's like more than maybe us being involved in organizing their events is as like going there and speaking maybe at that event and again spreading the word about uh, you know PostgreSQL and maybe more uh, explaining how to use it and et cetera. Yes, it make, yeah. makes sense. And eventually in, in the long term can again bring more people interested in PostgreSQL and maybe exactly. some of the yeah. people new, interested as well in, in, in contributing. So yeah. yeah. And the other one is how important, for example, in, in European countries, for example, mm -hmm. local uh, um, local uh, event organization is the presence of uh, a, a strong company in that in that country that can take because that, that's what happened. I, mean, I don't think it's a coincidence that in Italy we stopped mm -hmm. in 2020, which was you know the year of COVID, but also the year that second quarter was acquired, yeah. and uh, um, we basically stopped working on, on, on events, you know, and, and the community, I think, needs a kind of a, an engine 
you know, that can lead so that they can tag along, you know. Uh, but I think how, how important is, yeah. according to you, to have a strong uh, b business or strong organization mm -hmm. in a country to do all the hard work so that the others can, can jump in? Uh, I think that, uh, again, because of the popularity and because n n now it's, I think it's easier to organize the event than five years ago six years ago, 10 years ago, was like, wow, it was like, you really need to do a lot of effort, especially in finding uh, people, like companies interested in, in sponsoring, let's say, in contributing. Okay, now it's much more easier. Like, so I think all that effort in previous year, now it's repaying us back in that. So I think, if it was true in 2020, uh, it's less true, I think, now, because there are more companies. So what I'm currently experiencing, at least in Barcelona and Madrid, it's like since the first moment, like company like, uh, again, not to mention Databene, because it seems conflict of interest, uh, Adyen, uh, Microsoft, uh, was just talking this day with Timescale, uh, EDB, uh, they all interested in contributing. So we wanna, I, I, we wanna have a problem in having support. Even if like there is not one single strong engine, there are like multiple, let's say even little engine, but they all willing to to contribute. And I think what we need to guarantee, again, as I mentioned, is the fact that we gonna have that long term commitment because otherwise. If we all of a sudden, you know, Dave goes back to Amsterdam, Nacho Thank goes you. back to Venezuela, and I go back, I don't know, to Australia or Italy, it's then it's going to be a problem in those companies. And I say, what? You know, wh where is the community support? We are, we are out of time. I yeah. will add one thing before we go. One thing, um, Data Saturdays is something everyone here should look up because it's another venue that you could use to get the word out on Postgres because it used to be SQL Saturdays, but now it is Data Saturdays and they are open to Postgres. I engage with that community too. And other than that, thank you, great session. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you.